We'll now have 10 minutes of questioning uh, between Dr. Craig asking Dr. Uh, Kagan okay. about his thoughts. <clears throat> Well, obviously, a number of questions came up in my talk that would be pertinent to what you shared, Shelley. In your opening uh, address, you said right or wrong depends upon the, uh, whether you hurt other people without justification. Um, and when asked, uh, are these really wrong, you answered yes. Why? Because it harms the victim. Now, I guess my difficulty is that on an, I certainly agree that it's wrong to harm people, obviously, but it's hard for me to understand on a naturalistic worldview, such as I described, why on the worldview of naturalism, inflicting harm upon other members of our species is really wrong. It seems to me that this happens all the time among other animals. And so why is it wrong peculiarly for human beings to inflict harm on each other? All right, so let's start with that. S suppose that uh my three-year-old nephew walks into your house, takes some book off your shelf, and tears the pages out. He hasn't done anything wrong. Or three-year-old's probably old enough he has done something wrong. Make a year and a half. He hasn't done anything wrong. If I go into your house, tear some pages out of your book, I've done something wrong. What's the difference? Well, I'm capable of appreciating reasons for respecting your property that my one-and-a-half-year-old, this is hypothetical, one-and-a-half-year-old nephew doesn't doesn't have the capacity. Right? There are differences between people that allow me and you to think about our behaviors, to evaluate our behaviors, to see whether or not there are legitimate reasons for behaving as we do. Creatures that don't have that capacity don't have that capacity. It's precisely because they lack that capacity that makes no sense that the notion of right and wrong behavior gets no purchase. Lions can't reflect upon their behavior, so when they do it, it's not wrong. If you or I were to engage in that behavior, we can reflect upon that. We can recognize the reasons for not behaving that way. So I think the distinction is a fairly straightforward one, not a, not a deep mystery or a hard challenge for the naturalist to, to respond to. Okay, I think that's a, a good answer for why we wouldn't regard animals as moral agents who would be culpable for their acts. Um, but it seems to me that at best that answer would go to show that rationality or the ability to reflect rationally on things is a necessary condition for moral behavior. But I don't see that that's a sufficient condition for moral behavior. It's still not clear to me why uh, it would be wrong for creatures who have considerably complex neurological systems uh, to inflict harm on each other on a naturalistic worldview in the struggle for survival. Okay, so the question you asked initially was, how can I explain why it's wrong for me to murder when it's not wrong for lions to murder? Mm -hmm. And to answer that question, all it takes is for me to point out a relevant difference between us. And right. you've just, I think, said, yeah, all right, so I, I managed to do that. If we now shift to the question, so what does it take for wrongness to enter the world above and beyond rationality? I think the answer might well be actually once we achieve a certain level of rationality, nothing more is taken. Nothing more is needed. What, the reason it's objectively wrong for me to engage in murder is precisely because there is a reason for me not to do it. A reason that I'm capable of recognizing. And if you ask, well, what more does it take? The answer is, well, that, those are the basic ingredients right there. We can, we can refine it. I mean, we can, yeah. we can put a little icing on it if we'd like to make it. But in terms of the essentials, that's it. What there's reason for me to do depends on what kind of creature I am. Once I become the kind of creature in the evolutionary you know, 
process, once, once creatures evolve that are capable of stepping back from their actions, capable of reflecting about whether or not their behavior makes sense, whether it conforms to standards that they are themselves prepared to endorse, at that point the machinery is in place. And at that point there are reasons for me to behave in certain ways and to avoid other kinds of behavior. And if you ask, but what makes that wrong? You know, yeah, I'm still not yeah, clear well, as to well, why these beings suddenly achieve moral, intrinsic moral worth in virtue of having these complex nervous systems that enables them to have self-reflection and so forth. If you put it as complex nervous systems, it sounds pretty deflationary. Right. What's so special about having a complex nervous system? But of course, that complex nervous system allows you to do calculus. It allows you to do astrophysics. It allows you to write poetry. It allows you to fall in love. Put under that description, you ask, what's so special about humans from a naturalist perspective? I'm at a loss to know how to answer that question. If you don't see why we'd be special and different from everything else uh, in creation, that because we can do poetry, we can write a novel, we can think philosophical thoughts, we can do calculus, and we can think about the morality of our behavior, I don't know what kind of answer could possibly satisfy you at that point. Well. Obviously, uh, uh, the kind of answer that I offered, but uh, <laughs> um, but can, 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 can I ask just to follow up on that? Because I mean, I could, I don't want to. I'm tempted to say I could play this game, and that's unfair. Because of course, it's not a game. But I, I could pose the same kinds of questions to you. Perhaps I will. You know, in ten minutes, I, 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 I could say, look. All right. So God says, you know, you guys are really, really special. Right. So, what did that, how, how does his saying it make us really special? But, but you see, he gave us a soul. How does our having a soul make us special? Whatever answer you give, you could always say, with regard to that, what's so special about that? At a certain point, you're just going to have to say, you know what? These features really do seem to me to be special. Insofar as it seems to me that our ability to communicate, to reflect, to love, to be creative, and consequently to shape our behavior with an eye towards how we're interacting with one another, these things strike me as remarkable yeah. ways in which we're special. I, I think that they strike all of us that way. And that's the difficulty, perhaps, I think, in, um, in uh, showing what I'm attempting to show is that we all do, I think, intuitively value one another. We value persons. We value poetry, creativity, and all of these things. I think we all agree that these are goods. I, the question is, though, on a naturalistic view, uh, why uh, think that these things are goods? It seems to me that there, you, you, you emphasize in your own book on the limits of morality, the importance of having explanations and not cutting off the search for explanations too soon. And I wonder if you're not cutting off the search for explanations too soon by simply saying, well, I'm just going to regard uh, persons as intrinsically valuable, but without any kind of further grounding for that. Well, of course, I haven't claimed there is no further grounding for that. Mm -hmm. I, I gave you a sketch of the contractarian thought. Your attitude was, I don't find that a very compelling story. It doesn't seem to me to be the kind of thing that constitutes an adequate grounding. Yeah. I suppose these things are in the eyes of the beholder, and everybody here has got... Is entitled to decide for themselves Certainly. what kind of answers uh, will, will be satisfactory or not. Well, let, let, me, yeah. let me ask you a different question. Then. Uh, one more. Oh, okay. Are, are you a determinist?